The International News Net World Report is a national television news show available in more than 30 million homes. We broadcast daily real news the networks won't tell you. We are solely viewer supported. That means you. You can donate at our website, innworldreport.net. We hope you find the following interview informative and helpful. In his eight years in Congress, Representative Bob Barr from Georgia was one of Washington's loudest critics of the federal government's abuses of power. Taking the lead in investigating the raid on Waco and in opposing Bill Clinton's efforts to undermine due process in terrorism cases. When George W. Bush took over and accelerated government power and the erosion of American civil liberties, Barr stood his ground and angered many in his own party. Since leaving Congress, Barr has taken an advisory role with the American Civil Liberties Union and writes a column for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Barr represents a growing set of conservatives angered with the administration's erosion of individual civil liberty. Former Congressman Barr has said publicly that George Bush is breaking the law by eavesdropping on U.S. citizens without warrants. He now joins us from his law office in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to INN, Congressman Barr. Plenty. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you and your listeners today. Congressman Barr, you sent letters this week to both John Conyers and Patrick Leahy urging Congress to hold extensive hearings in the amendments to the Foreign Intelligence or FISA Act. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has sent a similar letter asking them to take action as soon as this fall. What are your primary objections and what do you recommend? The primary objection that I and a lot of others have to the amendments to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, commonly known as FISA, that the Congress rushed through before leaving on its more important recess uh, a week ago and under pressure from the White House, is that the amendments give the government far too much power uh, to accomplish the goal that it said it needed to accomplish and now give it the power without any court supervision, without any meaningful supervision uh, required in the law by Congress to listen in to virtually any international phone call or Internet or email transmission by anybody in this country, whether they are a U.S. citizen or not, whether they have any contact or suspicion of being con uh, contacted by an al-Qaeda member or anything, the government can now, uh, with impunity, listen in to or read those communications. Congressman Moore, what would have been a good solution? If you had been in Congress, I'm sure you'd have put forward an amendment to make it more reasonable. What would have been a more reasonable approach? What would have been a more reasonable, reasonable approach would be to look at FISA, uh, as many have done, and conclude that uh, when it was passed 30 years ago, the technology of communications was very different and that there need to be some technical amendments to it to bring it in line with modern technology. Those amendments could have been very narrowly crafted, for example, to simply provide that if a survey, if, if a communication involves uh, two persons overseas, uh, and they are not, uh, of course, uh, subject to uh, the guarantees of our Fourth Amendment, for example, uh, simply because that call may be routed through modern technological means through the United States should not mean that it is a U.S. domestic call and therefore should require a court order. What, the way some current judges have interpreted the old 30-year-old FISA law would require the government to secure a warrant uh, to monitor that call even though it doesn't involve U.S. persons here in this country, simply because it is routed through the United States somewhere along the line. A proper amendment to the FISA law would have been to simply make clear that that type of call uh, is not subject to the warrant requirements of FISA. The administration said publicly that that's why it sought the changes to FISA, but the Amendments that it secured, that it pressured Congress into passing, go far, far beyond meeting that specific technological need. Are these amendments permanent? Have they set a precedent that the administration can hang its hat on? Or uh, let's say a few more of the Blue Dog Democrats come to their senses. Is it going to be able to be repealed or amended to where it is acceptable or is the law cast in stone? 
A uh, very good question. Of course, Congress, if it has the backbone to do so, can amend any federal law at any time it wishes, regardless of whether an administration wants it to be permanent. Unfortunately, Congresses over the uh, years have shown themselves unwilling to do that, uh, unless under extreme pressure. The good news, though, here is that the Democrat leadership in the Congress this year, when they passed this FISA amendment under pressure from the White House, at least had sense enough to make it temporary. So the Congress would have to take affirmative action within six months in order to uh, to continue it. So there's a, a six-month uh, sunset clause. That's the good news, because uh, at least it requires the Congress to do something. Hopefully what will happen between now and when that six months is up is what I and others, including Speaker Pelosi, have called for, and that is for Congress to step back in here and do what it should have done last weekend, uh, and that is take a very measured, very serious look at what actually needs to be done and not give the administration far more power than it needs to accomplish the narrow goal that most of us believe is necessary to simply make some technical amendments to FISA. Congressman Barr, you are aware that any... Uh, any person or persons that are targeted during this first six-month period, that their surveillance will carry on through the end of the Bush, uh, the end of the Bush term, assuming he makes it to the end. That is correct. Uh, even though the law itself expires after six months, unless Congress uh, reauthorizes it, if in fact the administration had begun a process of surveillance uh, during that six-month period, it could indeed continue on. Uh, until the end of the administration. Well, Congressman Barr, you've become a champion of civil liberties and Americans' privacy. This has been your, your reputation uh, before and during and, and especially since you've left Congress. You wrote an article back on August 7th talking about additional surveillance cameras in New York, comparing in a way Mayor Bloomberg to Tony Blair in England's uh, overzealous use of surveillance cameras. Could you tell us a little about that? Another area that I have been, as you've indicated, Lenny, concerned with, uh, particularly